Hey guys, what's up? This is the Great Mr. Lizard. Uh, I know it's been a long time since the first video. Uh, let me just go into a little bit of why that is. Um, I was actually going to do a tutorial video on fission and fusion reactors, which are which are part of the Atomic Science mod. Um, however, the Atomic Science mod has been a little bit buggy for the last couple weeks. Um, the thermometers haven't been working, which are actually uh, pretty critical to making the, fish, the uh, fission reactors work. Um, so right now, I'm actually going to do a, a video specifically on the fusion reactors, um, and then hopefully once the thermometers get fixed, I'll do a video on the fission reactors too. So uh, without further ado, let's jump in. So the fusion reactors are a, a very late game um, way to make a ton of energy, um, and it's basically infinite, so uh, definitely highly suggest it once you get pretty far in the game. Uh, first step is you're going to need some kind of power source. So I just set up a power source here, just lava going into these uh, magmatic dynamos here. Um, got the uh, pronunciation right this time. And then go into the red zone energy conduits. Um, and then these will power what, what you're going to use. Uh, your chemical extractors. So I have three here just because um, I'm ch I cheated them in. But they are pretty expensive. So... Um, yeah, so you've got to get a chemical, chemical extractor. If you, we click into this here, um, it's going to need energy, and what it does is converts water into deuterium. Um, so, as you guys know, water is pretty easy to come by in Minecraft and get infinite water. Um, one easy way to do this is to make an aqueous accumulator. Um, it'll produce infinite water as long as you have two water blocks on each side of it. Um, and you can just send that into your uh, chemical extractors here. So with some power and water, it'll make the deuterium here forever. Um, what I did is I have a pipe set up underneath to actually suck the deuterium out and power it into my fusion reactor. So um, I have a fusion reactor set up here, which is kind of an advanced uh, setup and produces a ton of energy. Um, but to show you guys exactly how you set up a fusion reactor, um, I'm going to make one. Uh, so. Let's start here. Uh, my general rule is that when you're making, you're making fusion reactor, you want to put your fusion reactor block, which will be the center of the reactor, uh, at least three blocks up. So, just set this to dawn here, so it's getting a little dark. Go well, three blocks up, and then put the fusion reactor down. And the first step it says no, no deuterium right now. It's because you have to pipe in your deuterium, which I'll go over later. First step is to surround this block with uh, nine blocks of electromagnets, or eight blocks of electromagnets. So set this up here. I'll try to make this go quickly. Alright. And the next uh, the next part out will actually be nothing. So I'm gonna put dirt here and then you're gonna put another electromagnet. Um, and you'll actually want that to be empty. This is where the plasma is actually gonna go. Um, that's being produced by the fusion reactor and the plasma will actually um, be what's powering your a reactor, which I'll talk about in a little bit here. So, just put electromagnets all around what your electromagnets, uh, the electromagnets you already have placed, and just make sure to leave a block open. All right. So, do this here. Just, uh, all right. And the key. I don't know if you guys know much about. Um, a lot of this physics behind it, but the key to fission and fusion energy is to be powering it with water. So, um, the way to house this water is to put electromagnetic glass around it. So, we'll just put this here, and the electromagnetic glass will be placed under, underneath and above the plasma, which is necessary. Um, I'm not exactly sure if other kinds of glass would work, but I would just suggest in using the electromagnetic glass because um, you've heard it here that it does work, so just use that. And uh, throw it, like I said, throw it underneath and on top. Like I mentioned, about three blocks up, even with it uh, going down, you'll still be able to walk underneath. So I'll just pick these blocks up really quick. And then you have to go above. So. Put this around the top. And like I said, you'll have uh, that area now that's empty for the plasma to go through. By the way, if you guys have been noticing the other stuff over here, that's all fission reactor stuff um, that I was working on earlier. So like I said, once the thermometer is working, hopefully we'll be able to do a tutorial on that. So um, 
the way to extract power out of your fusion reactor is the water. Um, so you're going to want to place water blocks down everywhere there is electromagnets. An easy rule to remember. So everywhere there's electromagnets, stick a water block on top of it. So I'll just put water blocks here. Okay, cool. And then if you put water blocks here, they're going to spill out. So a um, way to prevent that from happening is just to put electromagnet glass um, on top. So we'll just do that. We'll surround this whole area with electromagnet glass. have to place all this all the water blocks down here um, I hate when you have flowing water so we'll see if we can try to figure out how to set this all up so there's no flowing water here place in the middle all right might take a while to get all your water in if you're not cheating it in to get it all flowing right all right almost done here Cool. All right, so this is your fusion reactor setup. Uh, the next step is to add reactor turbines on top of the water. Um, and when the fusion reactor is actually being powered or going, uh, the reactor turbines, or electric turbines, sorry, um, will be extracting that power from the water. Um, and you can use that power to power anything you, know, uh, you want. So we'll just attach these all the way wherever there's water. So. Uh, there's actually a more efficient way to do this, which I'll go over in a second. Uh, let's get some more turbines. It's a lot easier when you're uh, using cheat mode. Alright, so this is going to be your final setup. This will totally work for generating as much power as you want. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much how it goes. Uh, all you have to do is um, you'll send some deuterium in here. There's actually a step to this, so you're gonna have to send deuterium in using uh, fluid pipes. So you'll have it'll won't say no deuterium. It'll start showing a uh, volume indicator, um, and then after a while, um, there'll be a good amount of deuterium in. And actually, the reaction won't start um, unless you give it a boost. You have to give it an energy input, um, and once it breaks a barrier, then it will start producing electricity, um, and the fusion reaction will start. Um, so what I would suggest doing is if you send fluid pipes up, get some deuterium in there, then cut the fluid pipes off, um, insert some red, ed, redstone energy conduits, connect that up here, um, and then if you have enough power flowing through the redstone energy conduits and the reaction will start, um, and then you can cut it off. So that's basically how it works. Um, I can just show you kind of what you can make from uh, all this setup. I have a big setup here using a lot of different uh, electricity generation ideas. Same basic setup as I did over here. Um, I have my deuterium going in fluid pipes, and it goes right in here. You can see I have 10,000 liters of deuterium, um, which is pretty good. And you can see the purple is actually the plasma. The plasma is going in a circle um, and producing electricity. So if we go up here, check this out from the top point of view. We have the reactor turbines that are all above the water, like I showed. They're actually turning because the water is uh, heated up, and the turbines are produce electricity and I just attached the redstone energy conduit sort of above the turbines and sent them down. You can send them into a redstone energy cell or anything that will hold electricity or power anything you need. Um, an alternative way to collect the electricity from, or you know, uh, generate electricity from your fusion reaction is actually to, uh, 
get the steam and use the steam to produce electricity. So you can make what's called a steam funnel, and you just put them where the reactor turbines can go, right above the water, and then use kind of whatever kind of fluid pipe you want. Um, I would suggest actually using fluid ducts. They're part of the thermal expansion mod. You can just hook these up. Um, and actually use a tesseract. It's basically like the uh, build craft transport uh, pipes. I don't know if you know much about that. Basically, I'm just transporting the steam here down there to the bottom. And uh, as you can see, um, the, the steam goes into the reactor turbines. These are just big reactor turbines that I'm looking at over here. If you just put nine down um, in a square formation, and then you just uh, right, or, uh, you right, sh sorry, shift click with a wrench, um, and it'll make this big turbine. Um, and yeah, it's, it looks a little fancier. So if you just send steam in here, it'll produce uh, electricity, and you can just uh, extract that, extract, extract the electricity that way. And then have the electricity going down into the resident energy cell. I have a little system set up here too, just the steam's coming out, going into the electric turbines. Here I'm using actually Billcraft uh, fluid pipes, but either will work. Uh, so yeah, let's go down. We can check out exactly how much energy the fusion reactor produces. Um, it's actually a ton. So as you can see, initially we have about 176,000 uh, RF in here, and redstone flux. Uh, and if we connect up the redstone energy conduit, we'll see it starts producing a ton. That'll keep going, and it'll probably fill up in you know less than an hour. Or so definitely a huge benefit uh, having a huge reactor. It is an end game kind of thing. So well, why don't we just connect all these up here and see how much energy we're actually producing? Uh, quick note: one way to tell, I mentioned earlier that you need uh, energy input to start the reaction, and one way to tell if your reaction will keep going is actually to use a multimeter. I can take one of these here. And uh, pretty simple. All you have to essentially do is just if you right click the center block, you can see how much uh, energy you're getting. Uh, I have an energy input going into the top here. And so if you, if you use a multimeter and right click, you'll see basically how much energy you have going in to the fusion reaction. Fusion reaction. I already have energy going in now, so it'll just keep like that forever and keep going on and on and on. Um, but if you right click and you have a you have a setup like this where you have energy coming out and going back in, um, and if you have if your network saturation decreases, then you know that your system isn't uh, stable. Right now, my input is high enough to the point where the reaction will just keep going on and on and on forever. Um, but you need enough energy being supplied to the reaction um, that the reaction will keep going. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, that's all. See ya.